son, how you doing? This is Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. All right, here we go. Jamie Lee Dohegi jailed for manslaughter of a man she met on Plenty of Fish dating app. In the minutes before Jamie Lee Dohegi wrapped the cord of a sex toy around the neck of the man she had just met, she made a startling confession. I think I'm a psychopath, she told Mollen Rathod, who she had met on the dating app Plenty of Fish. She said she thinks she's a psychopath. Ooh. But tragically for the 24-year-old victim who was studying in Australia, his date's disclosure went unheeded. Instead, he agreed to fulfill a fantasy the young woman told him she had harbored. Choke play. What could go wrong? Which would ultimately cost him his life. Well, that could go wrong. I just went tighter and tighter. Then I whispered in his ear, That it's okay. (laughs) For who? Today, Dohigi, who turned 21 just days ago in prison, was sentenced in Victoria's Supreme Court to nine years behind bars after being found guilty of manslaughter. With time served, she could be eligible for parole in just over three years. Holy moly. So she'll be back on plenty of fish looking for her next guy to choke to death. She'll only get three years. No problem. The accused had a profound personality disorder. Captain Obvious said, Justice Peter Ullman said it was clear that Dohigi's crime had a degree of premeditation. It's only nine years. You chose in advance the act of violence ultimately perpetrated. You engaged him in the pretense of a game, the judge said. You took the life of a young person who had done nothing to harm or provoke you. One can only imagine the terror he felt when he realized that despite his urgent tapping, (laughs) you were not going to let go. I'll bet he was urgently tapping, poor guy. And, and, and she got nine years only, and she can be out in three? The court heard Dohegi had a profound, didn't they just say that, personality disorder, and was a survivor of extreme abuse and neglect. All right, here it comes. It all comes out. But Justice Ullman said that while she knew what she was doing was wrong, her moral culpability was significantly reduced because of mental illness. So... Claim something shitty happened to you in the past and act like a nut, and there you go, nine years. As a result, your sentence must be significantly moderated, he said. I knew I was going to kill him. I'm assuming this is what she's going to say. In July of 2018, Dohegi invited Mr. Rathad to come to her home after the pair connected. Mr. Rathod wasn't to know that the woman he was attracted to had been experiencing homicidal urges. I bet that wasn't in her profile. Nor was he aware that in the hours before his death, she had used Google to search, I'm going to kill someone tonight for fun. And she got nine years. Ten steps to commit a murder and get away with it. And she got nine years. Later, when investigators asked her why she invited Mr. Rathod over, Murder, she said, and she got nine years. I just had the urge. It's almost like someone smoking. Well, not really, but they can't help it. Well, they can, and so could you. They just really have to do it. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. I knew I was going to kill him if he came over. And she got nine years. I told him I was sorry. And just choked him with a cord. So there you go, boys. Fellas, in three years, she's going to be available. So 
Hang out on Planet Fish. Maybe you can have some fun with this one. All right, let's move on to our next story, shall we? Jealous woman knifed man in front of witnesses weeks after she bit his testicles. Ouch. Just a few weeks before Wayne Coventry's death, his killer, Cordelia Farrell, had told police it's getting worse and worse and one of us is going to end up dead. I think she knew then which one of them it was going to be. Wayne Coventry dialed 999 to report that his partner had bitten him on the testicles. After the incident, Farrell told police about his toxic relationship with Coventry, saying, It's getting worse and worse, and one of us is going to end up dead. I guess he said that. Her words proved, no, she did say that, proved prophetic. Just over a month later, Farrell stabbed Coventry to death. Yikes. All right, they'd been in a two-and-a-half-year toxic relationship characterized by violence and jealousy. At some point, you just got to say, uh, uh, bye-bye. Okay, there she is, fellas, the testicle biter. In front of three witnesses, this defendant removed from a kitchen knife block a large kitchen knife, and she turned away in Coventry, who turned to face her. She raised the knife up high and brought it down in a classic stabbing motion, you know, like in the movies, and plunged it deep into the middle of his chest. It went into a depth of nine centimeters and went straight into his orta, or aorta. He didn't stand a chance. He collapsed and died within a minute or two. Well, that's a tough break there, buddy. But uh, two or three years of putting up with getting your testicles bit and whatnot, I think I'd have been hitting the road a long time ago. She smiled as she pulled the knife out and grinned as if she was pleased in what she had done. She took her revenge or retaliation, as she herself described it, and deliberately and maliciously stabbed him. It's no coincidence that the defendant was to say to the police a month before the killing, that one of them would end up dead. Okay. When we'd find out how many years this one got. <laughs> During the course of that assault, Miss Farrell grabbed Mr. Co Coventry by the testicles in both her hands and dragged him around the flat. Yeah, see, um, that of course caused him immense pain and swelling. In the course of that attack, she later bit his private parts. All right, buddy, Mr. Coventry, you should have been long gone from this woman, the testicle biter. All right, let's check out our next story, shall we? Moan and groan. Mum of threes, life made a misery by neighbors' loud sex. But counsel said, it's natural noise. A mom of three has said her life is being made a misery by her neighbor having loud sex. The dispute has been ongoing at a home in Gorton, Manchester, since the lockdown began in March. But county officials say the noise is natural. The mom, who is asked not to be named, claims a woman who lives next door to her is making life a misery for her family. It's every night. It's terrible. Before lockdown, it wasn't really every night. Since lockdown, it's gotten worse. I think she lives alone, but someone comes late every night. At first, I thought, it's going to stop. Maybe she's got a new boyfriend, and the novelty will wear off. But it just never ended. <laughs> That's miserable. The mom sent a note to the neighbor and tried to speak to her from the window, but no success. From what I've heard, even when her friends are around, there is loud banging and arguing. Now, is that banging having sex, or is that banging pots and pans? All right. Yeah, the poor mom. She can't get any sleep. 
I don't know what else you can do. I'm so sleep deprived. Yeah, I know. You shouldn't have to move because your neighbor's having loud sex. All right. And finally, this happened. Riding that crocodile. There we go. I don't know where that's at, but <laughs> why wouldn't you? And that's going to do it for today's episode of the Aimless News. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share this video far and wide. Because remember, the Aimless News must be told. <laughs>